In this video, we'll provide you essential tips and strategies to survive the treacherous landscapes of Elden Ring. Feature first story boss and reveal hidden treasures within the beginning of the game. Get ready to get good. First things first, your character. Whether you want to look like a cutting edge samurai, a noble knight, a wise mage, or a properly disrobed individual, Elden Ring has a ton of options for you to choose from. Choose wisely as the one that you choose will affect your playstyle. Displayed on screen are each of the classes and their starter stats, along with their starter weapons. I'm gonna pick the legendary samurai to start. Next, pick a name for your character. We're gonna go with Test for this one. All of this is preference, besides the origin. Next, you wanna grab your keepsake. I recommend grabbing the lands between rune because this rune will let you start off with more runes to level up your character faster. You can pick one of these depending on the description that best suits your playstyle and your preference. Another good option is this one that reduces physical damage that you take when you consume it. This one is for something later on in the game. Next, you're gonna select your base template. You're gonna go with this guy. Then you can go into detail with your character and it's all based on preference, so just make them look like what you want to look like. Perfect. Alright, now, once you're done with that, we're going to finish up. After selecting your character, you'll be met with a ton of cutscenes that you need to watch because they're important to the story. I have already watched all of the cutscenes in this game multiple times, so I don't need to watch them again. After you finish watching the cutscenes, you'll be transported to this cathedral. I want to walk over here. Grab this messaging thing. It's not important. It just allows you to type messages to other players. Open up this door. Walk outside. And here we are. There's the game, by the way. Let's go over some combat basics before we engage the first boss. The first move we're gonna the first move we're gonna do is called the light attack. On Xbox you perform this action by pressing the RB button. PlayStation it's R1. And on PC, it's a left click. You want to use this move when you don't have too much time to power up and charge attacks in between dodges. Or when you want to stun lock an enemy. It's quick and effective. The next move is the heavy or strong attack. You can do this move on Xbox by pressing the RT button. On PlayStation by pressing the R2 button. Or on PC by holding shift and left clicking. It can be charged if you hold down the button for the attack and charging it will obviously do more damage. Doing this attack will allow you to break enemies stances easier and leave them open for more attacks. The next move on the list is your skill attack. On Xbox you want to press LT. On PlayStation you want to pl press L2. And on PC you want to hold shift and right click. This move will perform whatever skill you have on your right handed armament. The exception to this is if you have an armament that has the parry ash of war equipped in your left hand or you have a bow equipped in your left hand because pressing it will activate the ash of war for your bow. Two handing weapons will reduce the strength requirement for them and make them stronger. To two hand on Xbox hold Y and press LB for your left hand or RB for your right hand. For PlayStation hold triangle then press L1 or R1 swap. On PC, hold E and left click or right click for either side. For bows, first two hand the weapon and then you want to hold LB, L1 or right click for precision aiming. If you don't want free aim, you can instead lock on to your opponent by pressing the right click, the right stick down on either console or pressing Q on your keyboard. After you've locked on, hold down RB R1 or right left click or R2 RT right click I mean on PC you can hold it down for as long as you want and once you're ready release it and it will fire an arrow do note that you have to have arrows equipped in your arrow slot in order to be able to fire them dual wielding weapons requires one weapon in each hand one in the top row and one in the bottom row for this character, I don't have a second sword, so I can't dual wield attack. But um, dual wielding will change your LB button, which is your block button, 
or your L1 button or your right click button to a combo attack using both of the weapons that you have dual wielded. Now for the block, hold LB on Xbox, L1 on PlayStation or right click on PC to block. Blocking is very effective and it trades damage for your stamina. The more stamina you lose, the more likely it is that your stance will break and you'll be open for easy attacks. So be cautious when using this attack. And finally, we have the repost. If you have an enemy's wide open back or if you stance break an imp enemy, simply walk up to their backside or the glowing indicator on larger enemies and perform a light attack. Make sure you are standing still when you do this and you'll get massive damage out of it. Now that we know combat attacks, what about movement? For starters, it's a Soulsborne game, so your dodge is your best friend here. Do this on Xbox, you want to press B and point in the direction you want to roll slash dodge. On PlayStation, press circle and do the same, and on PC, press space and do the same. If you stand still and you dodge, or you don't point in a direction, you'll simply back step like that. Very useful for performing attacks like that. Next up we have the jump button. Yes, there's a jump button. That means that you can dodge attacks such as shockwaves or even enhance your own attacks with jumping. Jump attacks do more damage. Simply jump and perform a stronger light attack. If you're dual wielding, this is where your weapons shine. Simply press the combo attack button, aka the block button, when you jump in the air and you'll perform a combo jump attack, which is great for damage. Finally, for movement mechanics, we have the crouch button. Click your left stick on controllers and press X on keyboards. This will allow you to sneak up behind enemies and perform stealth attacks. Stealth attacks do more damage. If an enemy does not know that you're there and you attack them, you'll do more damage. It also allows you to repost enemies sometimes. Now we're going to put all these combat tips together to defeat our first boss. Or don't. I mean, you're really supposed to lose to this boss anyway. Try your best though because defeating it will give you some extra runes, weapons, and some bragging points. After you lose or win to this boss, it doesn't matter. You will be met with cutscenes and you'll wake up in a cave. After you wake up in a cave, you'll receive your flask of crimson tears and your flask of cerulean tears. Flask of crimson heals you whenever you take damage and your flask of cerulean replenishes your FP. Next, we're gonna make our way through the cave. Down here, if you jump, there's a tutorial to do. It, it basically explains all of the movement mechanics that I just showed you, but I explained a little bit more. And if you do this, you get runes and experience. So I highly recommend it if you're playing this game from brand new. After you do the tutorial or not, you wanna just make your way through the cave. Here's where you'll find your first set of grace. Activate this, then you'll come across this stone sword key gate if you selected the stone sword key as your keepsake then you can activate this statue and unlock this area it's very difficult but i didn't bring a stone sword key with me activating this body here will allow you to place down your multiplayer summon finger to be summoned in other worlds which is a completely different subject Next, you're going to want to go up this elevator. Now that we're up, you simply want to open the door and touch this second side of grace. After doing so, you want to head over to this guy and talk to him. Good luck me. Are you familiar? You may also be that. It will leave even if... Grace. To castle. The home. It's to castle. If you... It's to castle. If you... You want to talk to him until he starts repeating the last line that you heard over and over again that means that he's done talking next we're gonna begin our walk we're gonna walk around this way because that guy over there he looks tough because he is tough and he will just completely destroy you if you try to fight him so we're just gonna run around you sneak if you have to we're gonna run around and we're gonna come up here to this church Touch this third side of grace here, grab this smithing stone, it'll be your first little piece of an upgrade to your weapon, and talk to this guy. Once you have enough runes, you want to come back here and grab this crafting kit, but for now, we don't have enough, so. If you did grab the keepsake lands between rune, 
You're going to use it in your inventory by going to inventory, hovering over it, pressing A, and then selecting use. After you use it, it'll give you 3,000 runes. You can purchase the crafting kit now. Purchase that. Then you want to purchase these cookbooks as well. This is only if you have that keepsake that I was talking about. Or if you got runes from killing either the Grafted Scion, the Draconic Sentinel, Tree Sentinel, or doing the Catacomb in the first cave. Next, we're going to start heading on this path. If you notice, there are enemies along this path. Like, a lot of enemies. And you have three choices. One, you could fight the soldiers if you think you're ready. Two, you can try to sneak past them. Or three, you can just try to run past them. Running past them works just as efficiently. Next, we're gonna head over here to the north. Just keep running. Activate this side of grace here and rest at it. At this side of grace, you'll meet with Melina and she'll talk to you. Accept her offer. After you accept her offer, she'll give you a ring that will summon your horse. She'll also tell you that you can, she can level up your character with runes by turning them to strength. After you're done talking to her or leveling it up, if you have enough runes, then you want to go into your equipment. Actually, I'm sorry. You want to go over here to your pouch on the right side and equip Torrent's uh, ring. So you can just have it on speed dial. On Xbox, it's hold Y. On PlayStation, it's hold triangle. And I think on PC, it's hold at E. But hold that and then you press right on the d-pad and it'll summon or unsummon him after we have torrent we're just gonna run towards the middle of the ruins and grab this map fragment avoiding the night just like so spam y spam triangle run past and then come over here to this next side of grace touch it and reset it Okay, rest at it and it'll reset all of the enemies so they're no longer chasing you or whatever. Next, we're gonna come over here to this carriage, caravan, whatever. We're gonna sneak behind this enemy, lock onto him by pressing the right stick. Well, if your stealth option doesn't work, then you're gonna have to kill them. But if you can sneak past them, sneak past them. Your goal is to open up this chest. Boom, you got your first weapon, the flail. One of the first weapons. Next, we're gonna head this way. Try to sneak your way to the front and grab the same chest, just like, just like last time. Open it up, grab the item, and you got a great sword. After you grab both of those items, come back to the side of grace, or either side of grace on either side. Reset and start following my path. We're gonna head down here, open up the door, open up the chest, grab the Ash of War Storm Stomp and your Whetstone Knife. Now you have an Ash of War and the ability to apply it. We're just gonna teleport back to the Ash, uh, Side of Grace. Once we're at the Side of Grace, you just wanna rest at it. Scroll down to Ashes of War, or over what weapon you have equipped, and then apply it. We're gonna apply it to that one. If you like whatever weapon you're using and it has a good Ash of War already equipped, like a good skill, you really want to keep that on your weapon because you'll lose it if you switch it. So just keep that in mind. After you apply or don't apply your Ash of War next, we're going to start heading this way. You want to run up this hill, avoid the giant, avoid getting shot, and just keep running straight with Torrent. Press B or circle to dash, or space, I think, on PC to dash, and you'll be fast enough to escape. Next, you're going to come across this golden tree. Grab the golden seed, and we're going to use that to upgrade our flasks in a second. So you're going to be ambushed by wolves, just ignore them up here to this side of grace activate it rest when to scroll down to your flask add a charge to your flask the golden seed then you can talk to melina again 
Let's talk to her and she'll explain what the golden seed is. After that, you want to come up here, grab this item. Now you have the option to go back into the catacombs and unlock that stone sword barrier wall if you didn't already. Talk to her. She is the most important NPC in the beginning ever of this game. Do not kill her. Talk to her. Just talk to her until she tells you to go give a message to her friends. After you talk to her, you're done for now. You have something else to do in Stormvale Castle later. Next, we're gonna head east along this trail. Grab this item. Sprint past them. Come to this shack here. That's this side of Grace. Rest at it. Talk to Melina again. Talk to her. She'll explain some more lore. After that, come up here. Talk to this guy. Select the top option. After you talk to him, you get to learn skills. I recommend picking up the Ash of War parry and no skill. All of these are really good Ashes of War to pick up from him, but I recommend those two for now. Then talk to him again until you can't talk to him anymore. After that, after that, you want to keep heading east. Run through here. Grab this along the way. Keep running. That's this side of grace. And I'm going to come down here with Torrent, jump like this all the way out. You should survive. Jump up. Come over here to another NPC. Select the top option, exhaust his dialogue, and then just smack him. After you smack him a lot, just talk to him. After you smack him a lot, just talk to him. After he begins repeating, you're done with him. You can listen to the audio, and I recommend that you do, but I've already heard what he's gonna say, so I'm skipping it. Next, you're gonna come over here. Talk to the spirit if you want. Open this door, touch this side of grace. Boom, we've got our first set of catacombs, or second, depending on what you did. Now, the catacombs and the ruins that we found so far can be used to get runes. What you want to do is run through, kill all the enemies there, then reset at the side of grace without dying, of course. And then after you do that, then you'll get more and more runes. You can use the runes to level up. I recommend le leveling up your vigor first. It's your top stat. That'll increase your health and it'll help you with what's about to come next. Next, if you don't feel like doing the catacomb, walk outside the door, go back to Stormhill Shack on the map. Equip Torrent. Start riding this way. You wanna punch this guy until he drops you wild strikes. You can use that Ash of War as well if you want. Next, you're gonna come across this Porter fortifications, uh, these barricades, whatever. You're just gonna run past them. Try not to get hit by the crossbow thing at the top, this thing. Come inside the cave, run over here to the left side, you'll see a hole. Touch this really fast, rest at it, and there you go. Now we're ready for what's about to come. This is gonna be your first humbling point in this entire game. You really want to be at least level 20 before you walk through this door. Really want to be at least level 20 before you walk through this door. Or you want to find a friend that can help you do this. There's also Rogier here as a summon. He can help you as well. He's probably not going to be that much of a help though. 
I recommend going to the multiplayer tab and uh, using a furled finger hauling remedy if you have one. And a bunch of summoning signs will appear here if you don't have friends. But anyways, good luck and welcome to Elden Ring. Have fun and remember, get good. flame of ambition.